morning hello and welcome to our daily vlog of life on a beef and arable farm here in south yorkshire although later today i'm going to be traveling down to cornwall the furthest i've ever been and this is the vehicle i'm going to go in um yeah never driven that far and never driven that far with just just me on my lonesome um so that should be interesting but it might not make this part of the video to be honest morning mate morning <laughs> So Andy's got started with the straw blowing and I am going to be going out in the daft today. First time with the new box on and cattle in. They're all uh, loaded. Andy and Connor will start strawing up and I'll get off with these once we've got the paperwork. Oh, so everything's changed. I'm now on the JCB. My dad's took a load of cattle. So I'm still to take the lorry out with a load on, but it'll be all right. We can uh, we can wait it out. I'm not worried. But why, when I can happily sit in like this for eight, ten hours and work and not even like bat an eyelid about it, but when I'm thinking about driving for six hours with stops in between, it seems like a massive you know deal and massive adventure. Don't know why. It just does. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Why does it? Why? Why does it even feel like a thing? Um, I think the furthest I've driven before today is like three hours to Wales. So six, or maybe maybe Ken, when I did my Kendall run the other day at Lorry, maybe that was the far furthest I've driven. I think that I can remember anyway in a long time. I've never been anywhere near. Oh no, I, I, I went to Devon. Well, uh, yeah, I went to Devon over week, but that was broken up in steps. So, yeah, that's put actually, yeah. Sure, Joe. Sure. You have driven far. Morning, Andy. Morning, yeah. Yeah, I've just been saying, like, it's weird how I could drive this and not think about it. And then, like, thinking about driving six hours in cars, it's like a completely different kettle of fish. At least you haven't to take the cattle this morning. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Save me a few hours good. driving, didn't it? Yeah. But well, I'm driving this. Yeah. Off we go. This is fun, isn't it? This is the fun bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, ho hope you don't miss me. Well, you're going down there anyway. Andy's going to be there on Saturday, guys. Don't say that. I haven't packed a coat. That storm's coming in, isn't it? Oh, well, I'll have to buy a coat when I'm down there. Oh, I could, could call and get it, I suppose, anyway. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Somebody might give me a coat. Yeah, somebody give me a coat. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Crystal Street Motors coat, yeah, that'd be. <laughs> in the field, they're all chilling. And he's got a few more to pull out, look. Connor's just going to shift this uh, nine meter so we can pick up the spreader bale and blast some straw out with that as well. Sometimes get comments saying, why have we still got cattle inside? Why are they not on grass? So maybe every periodically I'll just let people know if you're a new subscriber. We are mainly beef finishing here. So we're buying cattle off grassland farms and then we're putting on the last little bit of fat um, to make the juicy steaks and um, burgers and all like beef, basically. So yeah, they're only staying with us for a very short period of time, sort of up to 90 days. And then they'll be gone into burgers and steaks. So yeah, we've got cattle in all the time, but they're not the same cattle, basically. And then the ones we put out to grass are the younger ones that still need to grow a bit and they need to build that frame and then what we're doing is just putting the weight on the frame so um, yeah that's what that is just a bit of a recap oh no you guys most of you guys know what i'm on about but but i'd recap it morning connor you all right it's coffee time oh we're we're quizzing connor now we're just saying about julie aren't we me julie yeah me julie du -du -du -du. you don't know that song no the youth that. of today I'm andy ali g well. have you ever heard of ali g Sasha Baron Cohen? No. No! no. Oh. What? Yeah. You need to watch it. It's like... Yeah, it's good. It's good. Yeah. Borat. Oh, I know Borat. Yeah, yeah it's the same guy, but like earlier. Alright, oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Who was best? Who was best? Ali G or Borat? I liked Borat in the early days. You know when he used to be on the Ali G? And they used yeah. to put him in? I thought it was brilliant. Oh, what's the other one? He did another one, didn't he? Let us know the other uh, 
the other Sasha Baron Cohen, no, if I can say his name, uh, actors. What, what was um, the gay one? <sighs> Bruno. Hey, Bruno. <laughs> Back to farming. Me and Andy are going to drop the sprayer off. I'm going to put a fertilizer spreader on and put some on the grass because it might rain in this part of the world. So we want some on. Got fertilizer spreader on. Andy's just got the mill on as well. So we'll get that greased up and we'll start doing a bit of milling. Right, we will head out the yard and get to this field of grass. So we're down here, just spreading fur on here. I keep saying here. <laughs> Um, it's growing a little bit actually. I thought with that lack of rain, it'd be a bit um, a bit dried off and not coming back. But no, it looks to be uh, looks to be growing a bit down here, which is good. Yeah, right, it's really coming back in here. Left a bit of grass in the odd place, haven't we? Blame that on my raking up. No, it's all going on nice. So there she is, being dwarfed by the electric pylon. I think we've got like big tractors and stuff, but compared to that, it's, it's a little speck in it. Um, so yeah, just going around, as you can see, it's all nicely growing away now. Um, just needs that bit of nitrogen to really boost it up and um, get a second crop off it. Uh, without it, it wouldn't really fill out in any way. Um, and we'd struggle to get a decent crop off it. And we need to, of course, we need that extra feed for the cattle to get them through the winter and just to keep everything fed and, and healthy. It's a cheap way of um, creating a bit of feed. Having it like homegrown like this, you know, saves us having to transport any in on lorries. It's only a few miles away from the farm here, so keeps everything as local and cheap as possible. Um, you know, we're not doing it for the ticking the local badge or anything like that like oh you know food miles and all that kind of thing it's just food miles is common sense business sense we're just traveling it up the road it's there it's in our yard it's done um, if we're trying to import something from some soya from south america or wherever then um, you know it's just it just don't make sense does it but for some for some reason some tax loophole or whatever things like this make sense in our in our modern world but um yeah i think this back to basics method of trying to grow homegrown forage is is what really makes sense and there's the weather uh, the weather the river at the side of us there which is nice got a bit of trash in it but to be honest looking here it looks nice a bit of rubbish in there but it's looking a lot better it used to just be full of shopping trolleys and bits and bobs like that but it's really starting to uh, come along down here I'm just getting down the hopper, so we'll just check. Oh, oh, it's fairly even. So sometimes there can be more in one side than the other, but we're, we're quite lucky. It's fairly even, so it should run out at the same time. If there'd been a bit more at one side than the other, I'd have just kicked it across with my feet and then uh, kept everything, everything working right. But uh, one more field to go and we're done down here. Look at this bit that we've reseeded is a lot darker grass. It's a lot thicker as well down by the river here. Yeah? It's a bit better ground. And now what Andy's up to down here. I think the shed's going up well. Hey, it's looking good. So we just need to clad the ends in. And uh, it should be done, but as it is, it's uh, it's keeping stuff dry anyway. So jobs are good and it's getting a few bigger things out now. Things are probably going. So I've just jumped on to push the barley into the shed. We're on milling today. So that's doing, so that's our barley that we're milling. Oh, some of it's ours. A lot of it's bought in actually, from local farmers. We've got some big ones coming out. Fair Walks in. Gates automatically shut behind him. When he feels like it. My dad will trap his head and we'll read the number and get his weight. Silence in the yard now, it's dinner time, we just turned the mill on. <laughs> See what I said that? The compressor kicks in in there. 
pondering what time to set off uh, down to Cornwall. I just looked at the hotel and Cornwall Shore's like here, we're here, and the hotel's like here. I've got to go past Cornwall Shore to get. Anyway, whatever. It's in Newquay. I'm stopping in Newquay. But um, yeah, I might get off in a bit. Six hours down there. Lovely jubbly. Um, so yeah, I might end the video here. If I if I've not, there'll be more. But um, yeah, I might end it here. So if you've liked it, press like button, subscribe if you're not already, and um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you. See you all at the show tomorrow. Come and say hello. Definitely come and say hello to me because I'm going to be on my billio. So make sure you do. Right. I do go actually, mixed mention time, so we're raising money for charity, well over £5,000 we've raised so far, and it's a happy birthday to Miles Watson, um, so happy birthday Miles, hope you've had a great one, and um, hope anybody else who's had a birthday is doing the same. Right, I'm going to head down, get some dinner, and hopefully cross my fingers, get set off. Bye!